So now we will show you a deepithelization procedure in the same pulse mode in a tomato. So sir will show you how to do a deepithelization procedure. So we are using 1.5 watt with a 50 percent duty cycle. We are going to ready now. So I is going to just make a small outline there just to mark the area where he is going to deepthylize. And uh, people do deepthylization in two different ways. One is they will uh, make scratches like you know uh, how children will make scratches on a paper with crayon. So you may do scratches like that horizontally and vertically. Other Some other people make small pinpoint holes like what sir is showing now. They will make small pinpoint holes and then they will try to wipe off the this one. Both the methods are okay. Uh, both have their own plus and minus. The pinpoint hole method uh, is not advisable for a thin biotype. If you have a thick gingiva, you can do that because you are poking into the gum, so thickness is there is not an issue. If you are having a thinner gingiva, you can just try to scrape on the surface and just try to remove this one. Don't try to remove the epithelium with your laser tip. You have to use the gauze, a wet gauze, and you have to just wipe it. When you wipe it, well enough with firm pressure the epithelium will just peel off okay so that that will give you an idea of the deepthylization which has been done there that will ensure that you're not going too deep also so now you can see is a quite a simple procedure deepthylization has been done right so this is a procedure which is used for things like clinical procedures like depigmentation now we will move on to the next where we are going to work with a goat mandible So here we have the goat mandible. So there is one thin strip of tissue around the tooth in this goat mandible where we are going to show you two things. One is we are going to show you a gingivectomy as what you will do for a crown lengthening clinically. Again we are using a pulse mode so we are using a higher power setting of 2 watts so you can any one particular tooth which tooth you are doing smell we are going to be working in one of the molars of the goat and uh, you basically keep it at an angle of around 60 to 90 degrees okay to the tooth contacting the soft tissue light contact sorry light contact you have to use and you have to just give repeated strokes don't try to remove the gingiva in one shot give one incision completely and repeat the incision again repeat the incision again in the same spot that is what is a layer cutting don't try to chop off the tissue in one shot it doesn't help at all okay so you have to do a layer cutting do one incision and again repeat it so that way is the correct way of increasing the crown height by just a gingivectomy one thing please note is that before you do a gingivectomy make sure that it is indicated for a gingivectomy that means your restoration or caries margin should not be close to the bone when you do the gingivectomy you should not be violating the biologic width periodontists will understand that straightforward but most practitioners find it difficult to understand for every procedure you cannot do a gingivectomy please do understand that if you want to do every procedure gingivectomy buy a 35 lakh erbium machine you can do every procedure gingivectomy with a close flap ostectomy and you can be happy everybody will be happy then okay so that completes our uh, procedure for a gingivectomy the final thing is a uh, deepthylization which sir is going to show you the same procedure on a mandible we are going to see in a meat how it is going to be instead of on a on a tomato so just make a small outline and we just remove the layer the layer removal program another deeper 
so just remove the layer one thing is don't expose the bone in a patient okay in this is okay but in a patient don't expose the bone right if you expose the bone and you are still keeping in contact or i mean the tip in contact with the bone you will end up with a nail necrosis rarely it can result in a sequestrum most of the times it does heal unless you are using excessive powers if you are using excessive powers then it's a bad idea because you are going to then have a sequestrum there and there's going to be a problem right so that is for a uh, deepthalization as uh, for a depigmentation what you are doing right okay so this completes the preclinical exercises and we'll hand over to dr trinath who will instruct you on where you have to assemble for your preclinical exercises